Welcome to La Criminotica. On this occasion, we will delve into the fascinating story of Margaret Allen, a unique and controversial figure in the criminal world. Classified as a murderer, Margaret defied the social and gender norms of her time by considering herself a male transvestite. Her life and her actions will lead us to explore the dark recesses of the human mind and the mysterious motives behind her crimes. Margaret Allen, also known as Bill, worked as a local bus driver in Rottenstall, Lancashire, England. However, her life took a tragic turn on August 28, 1948, when she committed a brutal murder with a hammer. Her victim was Nancy Ellen Chadwick, an elderly neighbor with whom relations were strained and troubled. In this video, we'll explore the details of the crime, the social context in which it took place, and the enigmatic state of mind of Margaret Allen at the time of the murder. Join us as we find out the events that led to her arrest just three days after her murder and how she faced justice, becoming the first woman to be executed in Britain in 12 years. The case of Margaret Allen continues to intrigue experts due to her unique psychology and her claims to seek gender reassignment. Was it a mind haunted by her identity, or were there darker motives behind her behavior? Join us in this disturbing story and unravel the mysteries that surround this singular murderer. Get ready for a journey through the darkest corners of the human mind in The Criminal Thack. Classification, Killer. Characteristics, Transvestite who considered himself a man. Number of victims, 1. Date of assassination, August 28, 1948. Arrest date, 3 days later. Date of birth, 1906. Victim profile, Nancy Ellen Chadwick, 68. Kill method, hit with a hammer. Location, Rottenstall, Lancashire, England, United Kingdom. Status, executed by hanging at Strangeways Prison on January 12, 1949. Rottenstall's Margaret Allen was a lesbian who wore men's clothing and preferred to be called, Bill, she worked as a local bus driver. On August 28, 1948, she hammered Nancy Ellen Chadwick to death. Mrs. Chadwick was an elderly neighbor who had come to borrow a cup of sugar. Apparently, the neighbors had never enjoyed the best of relationships, and Allen found it extremely irritating. Allen confessed to police that she was, in one of my funny moods. She was sentenced after a short trial on December 8, 1948 and hanged on January 12, 1949 by public hangman Albert Pierre Point, the first execution of a woman in Britain in 12 years and the third at Strangeways Prison. Margaret Allen, 1906, January 12, 1949, was a transvestite assassin who considered herself a man. She brutally attacked a local eccentric who was considered a miser. No clear motive has been determined for this crime. Allen was the 20th of 22 children and from an early age she preferred the stereotypical exploits and activities of men. She dressed as a man and performed tasks that were usually reserved for men due to the strength and stamina required to perform them. Her case continues to arouse interest due to the psychology of Margaret Allen. She claimed to have checked into the hospital for a delicate procedure to biologically turn her into a man. This claim has been disputed due to the fact that in 1935 it was considered highly unlikely that a surgeon could be found to perform such a procedure. On August 29, 1948, Nancy Chadwick, a cantankerous elderly widow, was found dead in the street outside Margaret Allen's Manchester home. The old woman had been struck with the tip of a coal hammer. Bloodstains led to Margaret Allen's home and the police suspected her from the start. She would talk a lot to reporters and patrons at her local pub whenever the subject of murder came up. She was also the first to point out Mrs. Chadwick's shopping bag floating in the River Irwell which ran behind the house. The police, however, were playing a waiting game. Bill Allen, as the 42-year-old lesbian preferred to be known, didn't know when to shut her mouth and, after several pints at her place, 
bragged about being the last person to see the victim alive. He also made it known that Mrs. Chadwick was wearing a petticoat with a concealed pocket sewn into it. The police visited her on September 1st and quickly confessed that she was in a strange mood. Allen's trial, in which she appeared dressed in men's clothing, only lasted five hours and the jury took only 15 minutes to find her guilty. She raised a petition to try to save it, but there were only 162 signatures from her and she was hanged at Strangeways Prison on January 12, 1949 by Albert Pierrepoint. The murder of Nancy Chadwick in 1948 interests many criminologists. What led her killer to brutally end her life? Was she greed? Uncontrollable anger? Or a mental disorder? Perhaps all these factors contributed to the crime. Some authors have described the murder as senseless and without motive, others suggest that Mrs. Chadwick was murdered on a whim and see it as a perplexing enigma the work of an unstable and erratic person beyond rational assessment. Margaret Allen, her killer, was a troubled person with gender confusion. In more modern times, she would have been seen as a transsexual and she might have sought the right help for her problems, but Allen was born in 1906, she was part of a huge working-class family. The 20th child of 22 children, and lived in a time when people like her were misunderstood. From an early age, she denied her own femininity and strove to act masculine. Allen preferred the company of burly male workers in her hometown of Rottenstall, in Lancashire, England, and she took on jobs usually given to men. She loaded coal, repaired houses, and became a bus driver. Unfortunately, her desire to adopt masculine traits led her to swear, act aggressively and resort to physical violence. The bus company fired her for mistreating passengers, customers who did not sit down quickly enough were prone to being verbally assaulted, pushed, and handcuffed. In 1935, Allen claimed that she had been admitted to a hospital for what she described as a delicate operation. Later, she suggested that the purpose of this procedure had been to change her from female to male. It seems likely that Allen was lying, or at least exaggerating about the nature of the treatment she received. She perhaps so desperately wanted to change her gender, and be accepted as a man, that she sought to convince herself and or others that she had been physically altered. Whatever the actual facts of the matter, after claiming that she had had the operation, Alan did not pretend about her sexual role change, he called himself Bill, cut his hair, dressed in men's clothing, and drank in bars, bars, and working men's clubs. He had no friends except Mrs. Annie Cook. Apparently, Alan saw this lady as a potential girlfriend, but her relationship stalled when Alan took Mrs. Cook on vacation and asked her to have sex with her. The offended Mrs. Cook refused, making it clear that she had no interest in Alan as her lover. In 1943, when her mother died, Alan was severely affected and withdrew further from normal social activities. Her smoking habit became excessive, she did not eat properly, she allowed herself to mess up her hair, and she went through bouts of gloomy depression. Allen invested her savings in the purchase of a dilapidated building that once served as Rottenstall's police headquarters, located on the town's main thoroughfare, Baycup Road. She lived alone and, according to Mrs. Cook, tried to commit suicide on at least one occasion with gas, in the UK, as many British readers will remember, natural gas did not generally replace coal gas, which is highly toxic, as a cooking-slash-heating fuel until the 1970s. On August 28, 1948, the 68-year-old widow, Mrs. Nancy Ellen Chadwick, an unpleasant local eccentric, knocked on Allen's door. Although she was evidently not poor, Chadwick, who was known for carrying large sums of money in a bag, was a miser who would rather steal from others than spend her own money. The next day, Chadwick's body was found in the driveway in front of Allen's house. Her head had been hit. At first it was suspected that she was a victim of hit and run. But the police later determined that her injuries had been caused by the tip of a coal hammer, 
the implement had evidently been covered with ashes. She was called to the Scotland Yard detectives. Her task was relatively easy thanks to a blood trail that could be followed from the place where her body was found to Alan's residence. Alan shamelessly chased after the investigators, watching them for long periods as they surveyed the area. At one point, she ran up to a detective, tugged on her sleeve, and pointed to the nearby River Irwell, declaring, look, there's something there. The object floating in the water was Mrs. Chadwick's purse, minus the money it contained. As the police delved with quiet deliberation, Margaret Allen, perhaps overconfident in her methodical approach and intent on the spotlight, stormed into the local pub, declaring, I was the last person to see the old lady. For two days she returned to the bar to drink stout and share her views on crime with other drinkers and increasingly curious journalists. She was an old fool to sit on a roadside bench counting her money, Alan revealingly declared to her listeners. She also made it known that the victim was wearing a petticoat with a concealed pocket. When police called her home on September 1, 1948, they noticed bloodstains on an interior wall near the entry. A brief search of the building turned up enough evidence to convict Alan of Chadwick's murder, there were more blood marks in the basement. Investigators compared hair from the victim's head to Alan's clothing and discovered various effects belonging to Chadwick. All that remained was for Alan to confess. When she was indicted, Margaret Allen admitted to killing the old woman. She was in a strange mood, she seemed to insist on going in, into the house. I just looked around and saw a hammer in the kitchen, just as I hit her, she yelled at me and it seemed like make me jump more and hit her a few times, I don't know how many. She gave no other explanation. At her trial, which barely lasted five hours, she was wearing men's clothing, despite her lawyer's attempts to prove she was insane, Alan was found guilty and sentenced to death. Her friend, Mrs. Cook, created a petition to request a commutation, but only 162 people, out of the city's population of nearly 30,000, signed it. In the condemned cell, Margaret Allen was belligerent and argumentative to the very end. She complained about the lack of prison amenities, and when the last of her meals, she had ordered a plate of scrambled eggs, were brought to her, she kicked the tray, spilled the food, and commented, at least no one else will enjoy that food. British hangings used to be incredibly quick affairs. It was considered an act of mercy to be as speedy as possible, although, for many years, executions in Scotland took considerably longer because north of the border regulations required the sentence to be read beforehand. Still, there was usually time for the prisoner to say a few words. On the morning of January 12, 1949, Margaret Allen expressed no remorse and she went to the gallows in the execution chamber without making any final statement. And so she concludes this intriguing case in La Criminotica. I hope you enjoyed this immersion into the life of Margaret Allen and her shocking criminal history. I am delighted to see how La Criminotica is capturing the interest of our audience, and I want to thank you all for your support and enthusiasm. If you like this content and want to keep discovering more fascinating cases, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. So you won't miss any of our future episodes, where we will continue to explore the most intriguing mysteries of the world of crime. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and family who are also passionate about mystery and criminology. Your support helps us grow and keep bringing interesting and captivating content. Once again, thank you all for joining us in La Criminotica. See you soon with more exciting cases. Until next time.